and welcome to this video in uh, a series of videos on how to make a Pac-Man game in Scratch 3. Uh, in this video we're going to be adding some more enemy ghosts. We're going to add one which um, goes around and when it touches Pac-Man it then reveals another one and that other one, if it touches Pac-Man, will kill Pac-Man and it will be game over. We call that one the killer ghost. So let's begin by um, creating our revealer ghost. Now we've already created a ghost for um, slowing Pac-Man down so we can use that as our template. So let's just right click on the slow down ghost and duplicate it and on that duplicated one we're going to name this one the revealer ghost. And um, this ghost is going to have, um, it is going to want to glide around but it's going to want to be in different places um, and it's going to want to start in a different place so we'll just get rid of all that code for now. Um, it will want to appear when the show dots thing is broadcast and um, it will want to do some stuff when it touches Pac-Man uh, but we don't know quite what yet so we'll get rid of that, get rid of that and crucially we're going to change its colour. So let's just go to costumes and choose a colour, doesn't matter what it is, um, I'm going to make mine sort of orange colour and I'm just going to grab the fill and fill in my costume so that I've got a ghost of a different colour. So here we go, here's my revealer ghost now. And if I just press the green flag button, you can see that it's animated. It's not going anywhere. It won't do anything if I touch it, but it's there and that's a good start. So let's begin by giving it a kind of a route to take around the course. We just need to choose where's it going to start. So uh, yep, this seems like a good location. So I'm going to get, once you've placed it in the right place, you need to then do a go to. So I'm going to grab my go to block. So it goes to that location. And then I'm going to set it on a bit of a course around my game. So I'm just going to need to uh, use my glides for that. So it starts here and it goes to here. So again, I now need to put a glide over three seconds. Glide down here. A very short distance, maybe 0 0.5 seconds. Over here. Again, that's also perhaps 0 0.5. And so on. So you just keep adding, keep moving and then add the glide, move, add the glide and so on and the times if you need to until you're happy with your pattern. Remembering of course that you do also need to go back to the original location in order to put this in like a bit of a loop. Okay so once you've um, finished putting all your, your glides in you can just click on that block to test its motion and check that it's moving as you want it to. Okay, perfect. I'm happy with how that's moving. So now we need to add the code to uh, the revealer ghost. That is going to mean that when it touches Pac-Man, some bad stuff happens. So here we go. We've got our forever loop if touching Pac-Man. And in here, we're going to simply broadcast. We need to go to events, sorry, and do broadcast, new message. And this will be uh, show killer ghost. Okay, and uh, once that's happened, we don't want to, you can't reveal the killer ghost a second time. Once it's revealed, it's revealed. So we no longer need to be doing this uh, check. So we could actually just make this ghost disappear altogether now. So that's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is say, we're gonna stop all other scripts in the sprite. So it's gonna stop the motion script. It's gonna stop the animation script. Um, and then we're going to hide. And then we're going to stop this script as well. So control again and stop this script. So that just means that once it's touched Pac-Man, it's going to say to the, to the killer ghost, you need to take over now and it will disappear. Uh, now, of course, if um, the game for some reason ends, wants to end, um, and this ghost is still uh, on the screen, we also need it to hide. So we can just add a when I receive uh, let's say when the maze is hidden all the ghosts should be hidden as well so we can just hide when the maze is hidden as well and in fact that was true of our slowdown ghost I didn't do that so let's go back to the slowdown ghost and just quickly go events when I receive hide maze I want to hide the slowdown ghost also so I've now got my revealer ghost going around uh, I now need to create another ghost which is going to be my killer ghost so I'm going to duplicate this ghost and on this one I'm going to call it killer ghost and in my killer ghost I'm going to want to go to costumes and I want to change its color again so this time because it's a killer I'm going to get a, a nice strong kind of red color and fill that in so my killer ghost is a different color 
and I'm going to set the path and the route for my killer ghost. So maybe I'm going to start my killer ghost around here and just like with the other ghosts I'm going to now um, get rid of all those glides and go-tos and I'm going to change the code that goes in there so I'll deal with that in a second and I want it to appear down here so place it where you want it to start motion and then go to and it will automatically have that location so when I receive ah now it's not when I receive show dots it's when I receive show killer ghost so all of these need updating show killer ghost when I receive show killer ghost that one stays as hide maze but the others are when I receive show killer ghost go to that location and then we start the gliding so we move to the first place and then we add the gliding code and then we move to the next place and we add the gliding code and so on. Okay, and once you've set your path up, you can click to check it's correct and check that you're happy with where it's going. So I'm happy with that motion. Let's now add the code to um, kill Patman when he touches this ghost. To do that, we simply want to go to our uh, when I receive show killer ghost forever, if touching Patman, we need to broadcast a new message and that message is going to be game over and when game over is broadcast we can also then end all of the um, scripts that are running so we can say uh, stop all of the other scripts in this sprite uh, we're going to hide and we're going to stop this script as well So let's just see what happens. Let's run this through. So a little uh, red guy is showing, which he shouldn't be. So let's just make sure we've got, ah, yes, we need a, when green flag is clicked, we want um, our killer hidden. So let's try that again. Okay, so if I touch the orange, pat uh, the orange enemy, I should now reveal the revealer ghost. How am I gonna get there? It's actually quite hard chasing these things down. So let's see if I can get there. Ah. Come back. There we go. Right, and that got rid of the other one and it's revealed the killer. And now that I've hit the killer, it has disappeared and nothing's actually happened. It has broadcast uh, the message game over, but of course my game isn't geared up to do anything when game over is broadcast. So let's make some changes. Let's go back to our backdrop. Remember the backdrop is like the big controller of the whole game. So the backdrop is the sensible place to be listening out for that game over message. So let's say to the backdrop, when I receive game over, let's um, clear the maze. So let's hide the maze. Let's also hide Pac-Man. And let's hide any dots. Okay, so that should just clear everything uh, when we get that game over. So we can just test that by just clicking on that. Okay, so that works, that clears the game. And we now want a game over screen to appear. Uh, well, we kind of know how to do this. We did it with our um, slow mo, uh, with our level complete screen. We can create a game over sprite that appears as well. So let's go to paint a new sprite. We're going to call this one game over message, and let's use the text tool to create a game over screen. We could even put a little, uh, maybe an unhappy looking Patman under it as well. Perfect, okay, so let's see. We don't want this game over message to show when the game begins, so when green flag is clicked, it's going to be hidden. But when we receive the game over message, when I receive game over, we're going to want it to appear. Um, I'd quite like it to sort of fall down from the sky. So I'm going to set its position to be off the screen, so that's gonna be like, I don't think you can get any higher than 298 it would appear so let's let's go with that so let's set the uh, go to to be 0 and 298 and let's show and then we're going to use the little loop to make it move or we could glide it could glide down so that's fine so we could do glide to y is 0 in a second so that will go pew down could be quicker couldn't it so let's try 0 0.5 pew and let's try a little bounce this would be quite fun so Let's, in very little time at all, go to Y is 20, oops, and then back to zero again. Pew. I think I've got those timings wrong around. Maybe that should be a bounce up and a fall. That's a bit slower. 
yeah, that's quite nice. Game over, falls in, and that's the end of the game. So that will appear when we hit the killer ghost. And perhaps also uh, we don't want dots remaining to show anymore on the screen. So let's go back to our backdrop and variables and just hide dots remaining. So let's run this through and see what happens. Okay, Patman has hit the revealer ghost. The revealer ghost has been revealed, so let's hit it and game over. And there you go, that's everything you need for your Pac-Man game. You can extend your games further. We haven't talked about adding sound. It would be fantastic to have some startup music, uh, some background music, sounds whenever you hit a pellet. We should definitely have some sounds when the killer ghost has been revealed, maybe like a warning siren. We could put a title screen so that instead of everything appearing when you click green flag, it could show like a Pac-Man title screen and then you click or press space to start or something and then the maze appears. We could have levels. You could have a score in there. There's lots and lots of different things you could do to make your game uh, more exciting, more interesting. If you've enjoyed this series, I'd love for you to uh, share the games you've made um, on Scratch and then uh, put a link in the comments if you want to so that I can see the games you've made and that other people can see them as well and comment on them too. Please keep your comments pleasant. Anything else will be removed. Um, and also, if you've enjoyed this video series, feel free to subscribe to the channel uh, or look around some of the other videos I've got for making other games. Uh, one you might particularly enjoy is the Alien Invaders, uh, Space Invaders clone. That one, or Alien Intruders, sorry, it's called. That's um, another game, retro-style game, made in Scratch. That one has a micro-bit control um, add-on as well, which is really fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. Thank you for watching and let's see what you can do.